Hi everyone, today I would love to introduce you to my self-designed 15 ampere battery for the Parkside series. If you love tinkering just like me and you already have a 3D printer, the price should be roughly the same as the official 8 ampere newly released battery from Parkside itself. Let's first have a look at the details of the project. The first thing we need is the dirt cheap 2 ampere battery pack from Parkside. Later on we'll extract the cells. We won't need them for this project but we can use them to extend another 2 ampere battery pack to a 4 ampere one. Maximizing our profit. I found the batteries we need for this project on Encon which is a very good website that delivers throughout the European Union for around 10 euros. I found this cell to be especially interesting. It comes with a rated capacity of 5000 mAh per hour. And if we order more than 10 cells, which we need, we need 15, it's 3 euro 85 per cell, which makes a total of 57.75 euros. We will also have 3 packs in parallel, which makes 14.4 times 3 is 43.2 amperes that the battery will be able to deliver, which makes for a total of around 864 watts of power. Which should be plenty of power, because if you look at a 2 ampere battery pack from Parkside themselves, the cells can barely hold up at 30 amps of power. So if you consider 20 amps times 2 for the 4 ampere pack of Parkside, it should be around 40 amps of power. Hours at 43 should be plenty enough. Let's order 15 cells. Well would you look at that, never buy your cat cat toys, they mostly don't even look at them. Just buy yourself toys and give the styrofoam packaging in the box to the cats. So there it is, the new 2170D style of lithium battery that Parkside is now using in their power tool batteries. And as the name suggests, it's 21.1 by 70.4 millimeters. And just for fun, a little size comparison to the smaller 18650 battery cells. Let's start the project. The first thing I'm doing here is designing the holders for the 21700 cells uh, so I can do a test print and also it's nice to have this in the 3D software so that I can design the housing around the measurements of that. I am slicing the file with Cura and I'm printing in PATG because PATG can handle higher temperatures which is pretty important for a battery pack like this because after a long time of use the cells can heat up quite a bit. Uh, PATG does print a little bit stringy as you can see here. I clean up the stringiness and now I'm going to try and put all the cells in the holders to see how the final finish is. It's very important to put the little edge that you see here on the inside. It's important that you stack the cells just like I do with first a positive row, next to that a negative and so on. And there we go, it fits like a glove. The first thing we'll be doing is marking a line on the little extra plastic bits that stick out on both sides. Next we remove the button, we won't be needing it now, we'll deal with it later. So I need my angle grinder, a battery and now I'll start cutting on this line. and there's bits of molten plastic, I'll just remove them and off to the other side. And there we go, that's pretty flat, it's not 100% perfect but it'll do. And the next thing is sanding paper, there's a little edge that also needs to be sanded down. The whole top part actually needs to be completely flush with the surface. So this is more or less what you want to achieve. As you can see, it lays completely flat on the table. I did however on the back make a little mistake and made it a bit crooked with the angle grinder, but I'm sure it will be fine. And as you can see, the little edge is gone. The next thing we deal with is the button, just put it back and push it down as far as it goes and then draw a little line on the part that sticks out. And now back to the angle grinder. And with the edge removed, let's put it back. And as you can see, it doesn't stick out anymore past the point of the plastic. And when we put it back, the mechanism still works fine. And that, at least for me, was the easy part. Now I need to start designing the cover around it. Let's start by taking the lower part of the holders to design the base. And 
The next thing I did is take a scan of the top part of the battery so I can draw it out in Photoshop so I have a nice line to work with uh, so that I can make the design perfectly to the shape of the top part. That's definitely easier said than done because I'm working with 3ds Max and that software is not really made for designing stuff like this because measuring is pretty hard in this software. I'm using little cubes to measure my distances as a workaround. I also suffer from being an extreme perfectionist and if something doesn't fit 100% I cannot just say like ah oh, it's good enough. No, I do it again and again. So here I'm printing the top part and I made a whole bunch of iterations of that until it fitted perfectly. Here you can see there's way too big of a gap. So I printed another one, better, and another one, even better, and better, and I finally nailed it. Then I designed two clippies on the left and the right side that hook over the battery and also provide an extra point that can be glued to the top part. Next up designing the screw holes, which I also made a couple of prints for to see if the screws would hold on. First it was too tight, then it was too loose. Anyway, in the end, I got to the right size of screw hole. Once I knew that those measurements were perfectly fine, I could model the holes into the 3D model. And that was three to four days of modeling in a minute and a half. And just like that, the time-lapse failed. Anyway, here's the final design. Look at this beauty! I'm super happy with the end results. Let's get this off of the build plate. The spatula is in. Print turned out very nicely. Very strong also. There you go. Now that the design process is done, let's go back to finally building the thing. With the latest iteration of their 2 ampere battery, the testing board is removable. I already removed endless amounts of nickel strips from other batteries, but with the ones from Parkside you need to be extra careful because the walls of the cells are a bit less thick and if you make the bridge movement, like this, then it's prone to tear a hole in the back of the negative side of the battery. So better move the pliers from side to side to remove the strips. First cut the nickel strips that connect the batteries to the board. Then remove the screws that hold in the battery management system. But you will see that it's still stuck without the screws. It's the heat plaster that's holding the temperature sensor in. You can just remove the board by gently prying it up with a screwdriver. And now carefully remove the nickel strips on the batteries by side to side movement. The ones that are connected, cut them in half and then side to side movement. I suggest doing one side first, so you can just slide out the batteries like that. And these cells we can use to upgrade a two ampere battery pack. Don't forget to clean up so you don't get a short later on in the project. So just like before when we removed all the plastic bits that were sticking out to get it flat on the table, we need to do the same with this part. I'll be using a white tire marker to mark where I have to cut. Next we use pliers to cut away the bottom part of the plastic. Be careful not to cut away too much because then it won't fit right. Rather we will sand away the excess amounts of plastic with sanding paper until it fits perfectly snug. There's a little bump in the top and the bottom part of the design. They must line up. Now with the batteries inside we will use the smallest screws from Parkside to connect the two halves. Now we can start grinding away. As you see, it still sticks out. So I'm using a rougher type of sanding paper so it goes a bit faster. It's important to check every once in a while if they're still wobble. The top and the bottom part must connect perfectly. And this is when it was fitting perfectly for me. There was no more wobble whatsoever. The next thing we need is super glue and gel form. Apply it to the outer tips of the plastic part we just prepared. Next thing, carefully place it in the top part and put it on top of the battery. Now put some pressure on top of it for about 2 to 3 minutes and when we remove the part carefully, you will see that the two halves are joined together and perfectly aligned to continue the project. Now we will remove the screws again and separate the two halves and now we will glue the top and bottom part permanently together. We'll put glue on the edges and also on the two sticking out pieces of plastic. 
and also this is a connecting point to the shell. Now we connect it to halves and wait another 2 to 3 minutes. And there we have it, the two parts glued together. Next thing is soldering. We need to extend the wires for the temperature sensor. Put some fresh solder on and then heat them both together while pulling on the sensor from the other side. There we go, it's loose. Next I removed all the excess bits of nickel strip that were sticking out. Then find yourself some cables that are 6 cm in length. Put some solder on all the connecting points. Don't forget heat shrink and put it all together. Now put the battery management board back onto the battery and fish the wires with some pliers. Put some fresh solder paste and connect them in the order you removed them from the battery in the first place. So now we can connect the board back to the base. The next thing we need is heatsink plaster. Put a fair amount onto the temperature sensor and stuff it in between the batteries. Optionally you can use some captain tape to hold it all together. And that's the next step of the battery finished. A couple of months ago I bought this cheap spot welder on AliExpress. I'm not sure if it will work, but let's give it a try. I already made my own off of an old microwave transformer, but it's not very precise. The only problem with the new one is it uses a car battery and of that I only have one. <laughs> it's inside of my car. Cannot say I have no dedication. Out of the car <laughs> and onto the workbench. Voltage is perfect. And with everything connected, let's see if it packs a punch. And oh yes, does it pack a punch. Look at that. Look at these spot wells. It just ripped the nickel strip apart instead of just coming loose. Sadly enough, the nickel strips that I have laying around are 0.15 millimeters, which is definitely not enough for the current that the battery needs to be able to deliver. I will link proper strips for you to use in the description. What I'm doing as a workaround is doubling them up. The positive and the negative side of the battery, I'm giving three strips on top of each other and on the other rows, I'm using two. It's important to spot weld them one at a time and not just stack them together. This way you will ensure that every connection is a good connection. These extra protection pads that I'm using on the positive side of the batteries make sure that there definitely won't be a short. Mine are a tiny bit too small because they're actually for 18650 cells, but then again I will link the right ones in the description for you to use. As you can see I'm working on one side of the battery first. That way you prevent causing a short with the other cells in series. Batteries that come from the factory usually only use 2 to 4 welding points. I'm probably going a bit overboard here, but I'm always rather safe than sorry and I want a good connection. Just like I want to be able to connect with all of you more easily in the future. If you like what I'm doing here, a sub would be massively appreciated. This video took around 8 days combined to produce, so getting this product to you would really mean the world to me. Also, if you have suggestions for future videos that you would love for me to make, feel free to type away in the comment section. Now back to the battery. We need to make sure now that we don't connect the different cell packs together because from now on it's a dead short since the other side is connected already. And if you don't like sparks flying it's a good idea to cover up the other cells in the pack with some tape so you don't accidentally connect the two with a piece of metal. Now we finally arrived at the positive side of the battery so I need to use three strips on top of each other. First I solder them together, solder them to the battery, fold them over and here I'm cutting them but you won't have to do that because the length you need is 10 centimeters. And with that we're almost finished, now spot welding them one by one and then I can finally put the car battery back into my car where it belongs. And there we have it, a working battery. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, totally finished. And as you can see it has a very slim profile on the sides with these nickel strips. 
We almost made it to the finish line. Only need to put everything together now. Make sure the cell sits snug into the base. The cover itself should just slide over without any friction. Put screws in. Careful not to over tighten these because it's only in plastic you're drilling. Last up the little side screws and done. And the next step is totally optional, marking the letters. And since we use the official battery management board, the charging should work perfectly. Now for the anti-slip pads, you can just either go with some simple rubber pads. Or if you want to go all in, just like I did, you can use a rubber type of printable material and glue it to the base. Obviously it would look better in some black or red rubber, but I don't have any of that. For the parts list it's obviously with the current prices and without shipping because that's different for every country. But all the links will be in the description where you can see the current prices for yourself. Also the 3D files of the model will be downloadable on Thingiverse and I'm providing them for free but if you like the work and you would like to give me a little tip that would be extremely appreciated. Anyway, see you on the next video and I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with the project, bye bye!